let's start with a quick refresh for anonymous in a class so let's say we have a class called validate report task and it implements runnable uh, straightforward we'll use some kind of thread pool and we'll submit this new task by creating the instance of that class we can avoid declaring this class itself if we use anonymous in a class so instead of declaring the validate report task class outside we can directly use this syntax of anonymous in a class wherein we just declare the interface that we are going to use we put around braces and we use the same code as before okay so now typically in our code we pass data in our functions right so here we are getting some kind of user and we are calling this function called calculate tax and we are passing the instance of the user there is also a possibility to pass a functionality as an argument and we do this very regularly here is an example of passing the functionality as an argument so we have just declared a thread pool we have declared this anonymous in a class which extends runnable and it implements the run method and within the run method we are declaring some code that we want to execute and we are submitting that algorithm or that functionality that we want to run to the thread pool by calling this thread pool dot submit method so in thread pool dot submit we are not passing data we are passing the functionality we want the thread pool to execute yes so in the previous example we saw passing data here we are seeing passing the functionality diagrammatically very simple there's a main thread encapsulates the functionality and it passes it along to the thread pool to the executor service and the executor service then calls the method and executes it using lambdas we can shorten this code into something like this we can skip this new runnable declaration of the method and everything and we can just write the lambda from here onwards so the below example acts as a shorthand for anonymous in a class and this is called a lambda so we'll just have the round braces of the run method we'll have an arrow symbol and then we'll have the code which we want to execute so conceptually lambdas are shorthand for anonymous inner classes so instead of runnable here in this example we have a callable but it follows the same process of having an anonymous inner class here and below is the same syntax for lambdas which reduces a lot of boilerplate that we were going to write and we can just mention round brackets and arrow symbol and the code which we want to execute and the last example for this is comparator here we have anonymous in a class for comparator with lambdas in the initial two examples we had just an empty brackets because those functions were not taking any values the run method and the call method but here the compare method takes two arguments it takes instances of user so that's why we have instead of empty round brackets we have u1 comma u2 we have the same arrow symbol and it's a single statement so we are not going to add a curly braces so a slight tweak to what we discussed earlier lambdas are conceptually a shorthand for some special kind of anonymous inner classes and these special types are generally known as single abstract method single method interfaces or functional interfaces so if you observe the examples that we looked at and this is runnable callable and comparator all three of them have only a single method yes and that is why it's called single method interfaces or single abstract method and these are actually nothing but contracts between the caller and the callee which are going to use these interfaces so we'll take the same example as before so we had a main thread which had an anonymous in a class called new runnable and it passed this functionality to the executor service using executor service dot execute and executor service on its side will accept this particular algorithm in the form of a runnable and store it in its own variable let's say that variable name is r eventually when the time comes it will use this r and call its run method this interface called runnable it's sort of a contract 
between the main thread and the executor service. So we can also think about these contracts in this way. The runnable is a contract which doesn't take an input and it doesn't return an output, right? So if you think about callable as a contract, callable say of type string, then it does not take an input, but it does return an output. Yes, so if you have a callable of string, it's going to return a string. And in generics, we can say callable of V will always return the output of V. So we saw two things. Lambdas are shorthands for, the, for anonymous inner classes. And lambdas are a way to encapsulate functionality and pass that as an argument. And that is also known as functional interfaces. Let, let's take a reverse example. List class implements a method called remove if. Okay, so here we get a list of users and we are saying remove if whatever functionality I am passing returns true. Okay, so this is a functionality or an algorithm we are using to remove some of the users from this list. So in this case, that functionality says that given a user, return true if the user is not active. So internally, it will iterate through all the users, pass the user to this functionality, and if this functionality says false, then it will remove that user from the list. Okay. Again, since it's a single statement within this code, we can use further shorthand and we can remove the curly braces and directly say, given a user, see if user is active or not. So this is also a lambda. If we check the function signature of remove if, it accepts predicate. Remember how executor service accepted only runnable? Similarly, remove if function only accepts predicate. And if we see the predicate, there it is. It's just a functional interface. It's a simple interface with a single abstract method which says test. And if it's a predicate of type T, it is saying that there will be a test method which accepts T and returns a boolean. The list method knows that it's going to get an instance of predicate and it's going to call the test method on it. And that test method will return either true or false. If we can use a lambda to declare our predicate, we can also do the same with anonymous in a class. So to help us understand better, we can also say new predicate for the type user and we can implement the method. Yes, so same functionality interchangeable. And Java 8 specifically declares important functional interfaces which can be used everywhere in the library. Yeah, we already saw predicate which given a value returns true or false. There is a consumer which accepts some value but does not return anything. Opposite to that is supplier which doesn't accept anything in its argument but it returns a value. And there is a function interface of type T and R which takes a type T and it returns the type R. Yes, so it maps or changes one type of input into some kind of output. Yeah, just to reiterate in a tabular form, specifically stream API, which was also introduced in Java 8, uses this concept of functional interfaces everywhere. So we saw about the consumer interface. One usage of that in stream API is for each of the user use this consumer function. And in our case, this consumer function used as a lambda says that given a user, take that user and process something. Yeah, in this case, it is calculating the tax for that user. And it is not returning anything, just like this method signature. There's a function interface, which takes one kind of input and returns other kind of output. Example of this is in the stream API map method, where we say users.stream.map, given a user, map this user to the tax for this user. So the output of this functionality will be, you initially had a stream of users, now you'll get a stream of taxes. So given an input, 
it mapped it to a different kind of output and lastly we have a supplier which does not take anything but it returns a t and an example of that is in stream which can generate a stream of integers for you so to generate it it does not take any input so that's why our lambda input is empty and in our code we are saying get a new random number every time this method is called so this lambda will be called each time by this int stream to generate a stream stream of integers lambdas are snippets of code which are sort of shorthands for anonymous in a class conceptually it describes some sort of algorithm or a functionality which we pass as an argument and typically they conform to functional interfaces there's a lot more to lambdas than this and we'll cover that in a subsequent video thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one bye